Hello and welcome to a cloud developer channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy our Angular application to the Azure websites. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how to create the deployment package itself. And then we're going to go ahead and hook it up to our uh, Azure subscription so that we can perform the actual deployment. And then we're also going to walk through the steps of creating the actual application um, feature or the actual application itself where we're going to actually deploy it to. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up our Explorer here. And uh, you'll notice that I already have a dist folder created here. And this is actually all of the content that we're going to be uploading. But I want to show you how to actually create this dist, dist folder using the Angular CLI. So I'm going to go ahead and open up PowerShell. And the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run a command uh, that actually creates a deployment package. And you do that by uh, typing in ng build dash dash prod. And uh, what this will do is it will uh, it will actually use a different set of options and flags inside of Angular CLI itself to be able to tell it to go ahead and minify everything and actually get rid of all of the comments and things that um, are not really needed for a deployment into a production type scenario. It also actually uh, gets rid of a lot of unused uh, files and optimizes it as much as it can. So another option I'm actually going to be providing here is this dash dash bh. And what this is actually going to do is this is the base href um, parameter that has been specified. And this is something that I need to specify as I found out that in Angular, uh, the norm parameter of slash is actually interfering with the actual uh, way that the files are being uh, generated. So by me overriding this by specifying dash slash, it actually made the application work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. And it's going to take a little bit to actually build it. So let's come back when it's done. Okay, so as you can see, the actual package uh, creation process has completed and it uh, outputted that it actually generated some files for me. So let's go ahead and into that disk folder and take a look at what got generated. So as you saw before, um, I already had a disk folder, but uh, now this is a new one that just got generated. And it has all the different files. So it has the index.html as well as all the JavaScript and the different image files that I have. If I go ahead and double click on this, you'll actually notice that this is the website that I was uh, using in the development uh, mode. So when you do ng serve, it actually would generate the same exact output. The difference here, though, is you notice in the browser uh, URL itself, it's actually uh, pointing to a local file now, and everything is still working. So we can see our footer, we see all of our images showing up correctly. So everything is ready for us to actually start the deployment. Now, in order to actually perform the deployment, the first thing we need to do is actually go ahead and set up our Azure destination for where we want to deploy to. So let's go ahead and do that now. now um, what I have here is my Azure portal. Um, and you can create a subscription of your own, uh, do a trial subscription. But I already have one, so I'll go ahead and actually create a new, um, new feature here. So, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose from a marketplace, a web plus mobile, um, and I'm going to go ahead and select web app. And uh, the first thing this is going to ask me is, what do I want the website to be called? So I'll go ahead and call it Cloud Developer IO, and we'll make sure that it's actually available. And then uh, I choose a subscription, and I'll go ahead and create a new subscription, uh, or sorry, a new resource group called Cloud Developer IO. It's going to be on Windows. And I'll go ahead and actually create a new um, service plan, or this is the application service plan, and I'll call it Free East US. The location I'm going to choose is East US, and I'm going to go ahead and change the pricing tier. Now, there's a lot of different options that are available here, uh, depending on the needs for your application. The specific application that we've written here um, is just a, a plain old HTML website that has some JavaScript files and some images. So it really doesn't need anything very powerful. And in fact, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and choose this uh, F1 free tier, which is actually free. I don't have to uh, pay for it. 
So um, the disadvantage of using this is that um, I can't actually have a custom URL. It will uh, give me the URL that is going to be available under the Azure Website.net uh, domain itself. Now, if I wanted to actually host it for my own website, I would choose probably something like shared because it actually allows you to specify a custom domain. So I'm going to go ahead and choose free and hit select. Click OK. And I'll go ahead and click create here. And uh, let's give it a moment for it to actually create this new web application. Okay. As you can see that uh, the deployment succeeded. So we should be able to go ahead and close this out. And let's actually go ahead and find it. So I'll click on this all resources. And here's our app service. So if I go ahead and click on this cloud developer IO, you'll notice that uh, the overview page comes up. And we can see the URL that was specified, as well as um, all of the different other um, details about this particular uh, website instance. So I'll go ahead and click uh, this URL here, and just to validate to make sure everything's working. And you can see that my app service app has been created, and it's ready for me to start using. So I'll go ahead and close this. Now, the next step is for me to actually go ahead and deploy the code. And the way we do this is we need to actually go ahead and uh, change the deployment options here. And under the deployment options, I'm going to go ahead and choose um, the local Git repository. You have other options available as well. And as you choose them, it will give you different options to be able to actually authorize or authenticate. But in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose local Git repository. And uh, when you do this for the first time, it's actually going to ask you to go ahead and create a, a local account to use to actually do the pushes. So in this case, uh, once you actually set it up, uh, or in my case, since I already did set it up, um, it doesn't ask me again because it's going to be reusing that same account. So now that I've actually chosen this, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's actually uh, going ahead and setting up that Git uh, repository for me, and it finished already. And now what I should be able to do is go ahead and go back to the overview page. And in here, one of the changes that uh, you'll, uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but before we actually had two FTP URLs listed. Now we have one is a Git clone URL. The other one is the FTP hosting. So what we need to do is we need to actually grab this uh, Git clone URL because we're going to be actually using it to set up another repo locally so that we can actually push to this particular uh, endpoint. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go back to my file system and I'll navigate uh, up a couple of folders um, and actually go ahead and create a new website, uh, not website, to folder. And we'll call it Azure Cloud Developer. And I'll go ahead and I'll go into that folder and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to initialize a local git repository. So in here now that I have it what I should be able to do is just take all of this content inside of the distribution folder and copy it inside of that Azure uh, cloud developer folder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit this into that local git repository. And then and now that everything is ready, what I should be able to do, I should be able to uh, do a git commit. And that's done. And what we should be able to do next is actually go ahead and um, add, let me actually copy the URL again here. I'm going to add a remote uh, branch. And this is going to be that endpoint that I'm going to want to push uh, this content to. So you do that by typing in git remote add Azure. Um, and then, well, actually, I'll just call it origin. Um, this is actually a, a normal naming convention uh, for a default branch. Um, and I'll go ahead and actually give it the actual URL here. So as soon as I did that, oh, you should be able to also check now um, which which is endpoints we actually have here. So in here, the origin branch, the main branch, um, is actually pointing to this remote uh, Azure source control Git repository. And what we should be able to do is perform a Git push. And we're going to do origin master. 
So um, here's where it actually asks you for that account is that you would have been asked to set up initial. I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and provide the password here and press enter. And now it's actually going to start pushing that code up. Now, as this is actually doing it and you go back to the deployment options, one of the things you'll notice here is you're going to actually end up seeing um, that it's doing a pending build, essentially. Um, we performed our initial check-in and now it's actually uh, beginning to do the actual deployment here. And um, it has completed now. So if we actually go ahead and click on it, we'll see uh, that it was uh, performed and it took about three seconds to do this. And then you'll see some details behind what it was actually doing. So it was updating the branch, updating the submodules, preparing the deployment. Um, it actually generated a deployment script. And you can actually see some of the content uh, that it, uh, of what it was actually trying to do. Um, it actually ran the deployment command, which is basically a bunch of copy operations, and then ran the post-deployment, and then it completed the deployment. So we'll go ahead and actually go back to the overview page. And in here, if we actually go ahead and click this button now, we should actually be able to see our website. So that is how simple it is to actually go ahead and push this uh, content out to the Azure website. Now. Uh, doing it this way is just one of the ways to actually perform the deployment. In my opinion, the ideal way is to actually automate the deployment steps themselves of being able to do the actual build out of the distribution folder um, on a build server, on some automated build server. So it actually watches for changes that happen um, in your uh, Git source control repository, and then it can actually trigger a particular build grab the distribution folder and automatically push the content over to your Azure website. Um, and this will actually make it easier for you to then maintain everything in source control and without having to run a bunch of commands separately. You can also uh, do things here with deployment slots. Now with a free tier, this is actually not available, but if you actually go up another tier where you can actually start doing um, slots, deployment spot, slots, and what they are are things where you can actually pre-stage your uh, application. So, for example, you can have your staging environment and your production environment. And what you'll notice here is there's this swap button, and one of the things that allows you to do is actually stage your changes, get them validated, and then when you're ready, you can click the swap button, which will actually make it live for your end users. So, uh, and this is something we'll be covering in future topics as well as things about uh, being able to make your application more uh, resilient to loads. Uh, so you should be able to do things like uh, scale out your application, which also requires you to um, have a higher level tier, a, a paid tier in this particular case. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave your feedback and comments in the comment section below, and I will answer them as quickly as I can. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.